you've been going to the Building Christian Fellowship for some time now, and you're probably wondering, how do I get involved? <laughs> We're glad you asked. Introducing for the first time at TBCF, Growth Track. Growth Track is a three-step process that equips and guides you in taking the next steps as you discover and walk in your redemptive purpose. In the first step of this three-step process, our pastors and key leaders will walk with you in how to get connected, where you will learn about our church history, core values, and vision for our church. After you've taken the step to get connected, you'll find out how to discover growth by not only finding out about yourself, but how God has designed you for real relevant relationship with Him and holy community with His body. The third and final step is where you take all of the understanding gain and start applying it by joining the Dream Team. There are many ways for us to connect and serve our community here at the building, and here's how you can get started today. Sign up for Growth Track by going to our website at youarethechurch.org forward slash growth dash track. That's youarethechurch.org forward slash growth dash track. Growth Track is available online, on demand, anytime you're ready. So let's discover and walk in our redemptive purpose by starting Growth Track today. the Lord together once again. Psalms 149.6 says, let the praises of God be in their lips or in their mouths and a sharp sword in their hands. The enemy wants us to be silent. He doesn't want to our praises and worships to be heard because he knows what our praise and our worship does. He knows that when we praise and we worship, heaven battles on our behalf that things in the atmosphere begin to change. So I wanna encourage you all, if you're going through something, if you're feeling hopeless, if it was hard to even get to the door, if you're funny, if your money's acting funny, or your kids are acting up, or whatever them circumstances, if you're struggling with your health, I just um, encourage you to praise and worship this morning. Don't let nothing hinder your praise because God deserves it all. He deserves our being. So this morning, I just um, encourage you just to worship with your whole heart. Let him change your circumstances. I pray that you just remove yourself from any situation, any burden, or anything that's hindering you this morning. So let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for another day. We thank you to, um, for the opportunity to come together once again to be in your praise, Lord. We just... Um, pray, Lord, that you just come in, Lord. We pray that you just meet us this morning where we're at, Father. Father, we just pray that your Holy Spirit have its way this morning, Father. We pray, Lord, that you touch every single heart, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are the Father who loves us, Father. We thank you that you are so, um, 
so tender and so gracious, Father. So, Father, have your way this morning. Have your way in this service. Have your way in this um, the worship this morning, Father. We pray that our hearts are open to receive what you have for us this morning, Lord. And we pray that it just falls on good ground, Lord, that we are changed, Lord, that we do not walk out these doors the same, Father. So have your way in, um, in this worship and the word this morning and in us, Lord. So we thank you and we praise you and glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
tuning out the noise, pressing in to hear your voice. We are rising up and we're shaking off the dust. There's a stirring in the wells, and our hearts are overwhelmed. Let revive.
just who you are and that's just what you do we lift your name higher and higher I see my shout the praise louder and louder I see my sweat of your name you are the king and you will always be yesterday today forever you're the same we lift your name higher and higher we shout your praise louder and louder this morning absolutely go ahead and get those selfies in guys and don't forget the hashtag tbcf life good morning church i am deacon tony tolbert and i am jackie and we are both part of the connections team amen so we like to welcome everyone here to the building. You guys look so great. Thank and those you. You online, welcome, welcome, welcome back. 
We're so glad that you came this morning. Amen. But if this is your first time, you're probably wondering, why do we call it the building? Help me out, church. That's all it is. Jesus Christ is not coming back for a building made up of stucco, cinder block, or drywall. The church he's coming back for is you. You, if you have the living of God living inside of you. So here at the building, we like to focus on four things. Yes. Building your faith. What is it? Hope. Building your hope, which I can't wait to hear more about. Building your love and building a real, relevant relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's see how you probably wonder how to get connected. So we don't ask you just to come to church on Sunday morning. We want you to be part of it, all right? So how you probably ask it, well, how can I do that? Well, if you have the app or if you don't, you can download the app right. and go to Grove Track and hear all about the building. Amen. But what's today? I see some green shirts in the house. What's today? Growth groups. Growth group signups. And if you're you're not, you haven't been here for a while, you're probably wondering, what's a growth group? Well, a growth, I'm glad you asked. Well, a growth group is where we come together as a family to build real relevant relationships, amen? And we learn about Jesus, so we're building a real relevant relationship with Jesus as well. So we have a few this, um, this session. We have EHS, and you're like, what is EHS? It's emotional, healthy spirituality. So that's for everybody. We have a co-ed one, and we're, we have a young adults. Where are my young adults at? So young adults, we want you to sign up with your pastors, Raquel and uh, Donald, amen? We have an EHR, that's Emotional Healthy Relationships, and we have the Davises with that one, amen? Amen. Uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, we have an Elevate. Where's my Elevate at? Elevators. Call Big Questions, amen? So we all have questions, so we want you guys to sign up for that. What else? We have Worship Walk still going on. Anybody like to walk? Oh, okay, there we are. On Saturdays, uh, what else do we have? Let's see. Oh, we have a women's. How can I forget? We had a women's oh, conference last, last Come yesterday. On, ladies. Ladies, Come on, where my noise. women at? Make some noise, ladies. Woo! We, learned, we learned about insight, Amen. and she talked about Elijah. So now the women's study is going to be on Elijah. So C. Tamija, Aquila, Lahoma. Hey, if you're ready, Burgundy. I don't know if she's here today, but any of the women core team, please. Uh, join that one. So all you got to do is go to the app and then go find groups and sign up today. If you have any questions, Tony and I are both be out there as well. But another way you can get connected and be have real relevant relationships is being, being baptized. Amen? Amen. If you haven't been baptized on October 9th as well, go to the app and sign up. We will have baptism. Amen. But let's see. Another way we can get connected is by going to different events. Where are my married couples at? Woo-hoo! Woo! I believe we have one coming up soon. So if you want to know about events, text the word COUPLE, okay, to 707-221-5500. That's 707-221-5500 and the word COUPLE, and you will find out all about the events. And you're probably wondering, like, where's the man? But, hey, where's what about the man? Oh, my man, make some noise. There we go, man. Don't forget also, on every third Saturday, we meet here at seven in the morning. Come on out, iron sharpens iron, and we pour into each other. Biblically, we feed each other. Absolutely, we get the real food, but we get the spiritual food as well. And it is growing. So yeah, be a part of that. Third, every third Saturday of the month. Just come on out here at seven o'clock, and just uh, prepare to have a, a good hour, a good hour in the Lord, and a good time with your brothers. Amen. Amen. All right, so we've reached the portion of the service where you can continue to uh, show service through your giving. So let's talk a little bit about generosity. Now, I don't know about you guys, but God so loved the world that he did what? He gave, and we definitely believe in that DNA. That's a part of who we are. Now, Matthew 6 tells us that if you go boasting about what you have given, you've already received your reward. So a God who sees you giving in what is gonna bless you in what kind of way, church? Openly. Openly. And uh, it goes without saying, we can all use an open blessing, you know, Amen. especially in these day and ages. All right, so there's three ways that we do it. The app that my lovely wife Jackie just talked about, hopefully you're downloading that now. If you didn't already, you can do it through the app. It's just automatic once you get it set up. The second way to do it, you can mail it into the church here. The physical location is 207 Marina Center, and that's in Sassoon City, California. 94585 and if you're in the sanctuary and you'd like to give today doing the old-fashioned way we do have the box in the back the amazing incredible deacon back here our deacon brother 
<laughs> Deacon Ruben, he, he'll model that for you. If, if you get lost, just ask anybody, but you can't miss it. It's right in the very back of the church. So with that, guys, let's go ahead and stand up. We're going to go ahead and pray. We're going to continue in worship today. And just thank you. And when you give, just remember, do it cheerfully. God loves a cheerful giver. Father God, Lord, just thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for these beautiful souls, Father God, that are here today for you, Lord. Please open their hearts, their minds, and their ears. Pour into them, Father God, as only you can, Lord. We love you. We appreciate you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's continue in worship. ready to continue worshiping this morning. If we can, let's just begin to call on the Holy Spirit today. It is only by the Holy Spirit that things happen, that things change, that people are restored, that joy comes. So Holy Spirit, we just ask that you will be in our midst this morning.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You truly change everything, God. Jesus, you change everything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. In wonder and surrender we fall down. So show us your glory. Show us your glory. Let every burning heart be holy ground. Hallelujah. Father, that is our prayer this morning, that every heart in the room would be holy ground this morning. Father God, a good ground that is ready to receive the engrafted word of God that is able to save our souls this morning. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We submit to your authority in this place this morning, and we say we are ready. We're ready for what you want to do. Move as you see fit. Flow the way you want to flow this morning, Father. We submit to your authority in this house, God. And we thank you that, King of glory, you will have your glory in this place. Father, we thank you that you'd be glorified, you'd be exalted among the nations in this house, Father. So we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And all that believe and agree said amen. Come on and give God a praise this morning. Come on and give him praise like you know he changes everything. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. To you be the highest praise. To you be the highest praise. Hallelujah. Come on and give him praise till something breaks in this room this morning. We put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Hallelujah. Have your way. Have your way, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and praise him. Worship him until apathy breaks. Worship him until complacency breaks. Come on. Oh, God. Jesus, you change everything. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Nobody like you, Lord. You change everything. You're changing everything. You're changing everything. Everything. New hearts in the building. New hearts in the building. New hope restored. Lives redeemed. Hope is found. Lives are healed in your presence, in your presence, in your presence. You're changing everything, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, you truly do change everything. You change everything, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord. everything yes you're changing everything Lord. take all I've known and break it apart Lord take what I've fallen break it down break it down with your truth your light your love Break it all apart, Lord. Oh, Jesus, like only you can, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We wait in your presence this morning. We wait in your presence this morning. Can we lift up the chorus to that song one more time? Come on, sing it out. Show us, 
Father, we say, do your work this morning. Do your work in our lives this morning. We are ready. We are ready to receive what it is that you want to do. We're ready to see what it is you're wanting to show us this morning. So we say, show us, God. Show us your glory, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for these things. In Jesus' mighty name, we said, amen. And amen. Come on, give God some praise in this house this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. <laughs> you can turn the lights on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He changes everything. He changes everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. You guys are amazing. Y'all give it up for our worship team. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, church family. It's nice to see all your beautiful faces this morning. My name is Atiyah. For those that you don't know me, I'm the minister of music here at the Building Christian Fellowship. And I am honored to be able to bring the word before you this morning. So as you know, we have been in our hope series, uh, the hope quotient. We're reading from a book called the hope quotient. And um, yeah, it's been life changing. It's a life changing book. The concept of hope. Uh, we had two amazing uh, presenters these last couple of weeks. We had Pastor Donald, who broke the seals on this whole teaching, and then uh, followed up by the Hope Girl herself, Pastor Jenny. <laughs> Pastor Jenny came in and brought a tremendous word. Um, so this morning, I am on assignment. I am on assignment this morning, and I believe that there is something that the Lord wants to address in our lives concerning hope this morning. And um, I just want you to really lean in. And, and if I can, if I may be honest with you this morning, uh, I, I, I struggled in preparing for this message this morning because, um, honestly, I was a little intimidated because the you know, Pastor Donald and Pastor Jenny, they, they, they brought to you, they extrapolated the principles from the chapters that, they, we, that we've read in this book and uh, the scriptures and stuff like that. And in my mind, from my perspective, it was from the victory side of holding on to hope, okay? But I, was, I, was, I felt intimidated because it's like, Lord, if I'm honest, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still trying to get a grip. I'm still trying to get a grip. And um, if I can just be, I just want to be led by the spirit this morning. I believe that God is wanting to address them. I believe this message is for everybody in the house this morning. But to those of you who have been struggling, Pastor Donald, when he opened up this series, he talked about hope, likened it to the, to the, to the grip on a deadlift that you're able to hold on. And if you're in this room this morning, you don't have to pretend. Can I let some air in the room this morning? You don't have to pretend that hope has never left you or that you never left it this morning. And I believe that God wants to have a Samaritan woman at the well moment for us this morning where he comes out of his way on a series that's uplifting and edifying to bring you hope personally. Amen. So I believe that God is, that, that we're the women at the well this morning. If you would just lean in, if you would just engage your hearts this morning to what I believe the Lord is wanting to minister to us as he ministered to me leading up to today, me being in front of you this morning. Amen. Hope. Hope has been likened to the middle child. And let me tell you, speaking as the middle child, 
I know what it's like to be forgotten about, all right? No shade, Mom. I love you. But uh, you know it is. It is. It's just in all in all seriousness, it's the 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 you know the middle child. You know we talk about faith, we talk about love and real relevant relationships. But hope is paramount. Hope is not a luxury; is an absolute necessity. And if it is underdeveloped or non-existent, how do you expect to carry on with faith and love and real relevant relationships? So this morning, if you're taking notes, this morning it's called the title of this message is called "Grappling with the Grip." Grappling with the grip. You know, it's one thing to, uh, you know, to engage in, like, cannon shooting, right? You know, you've seen, like, old school, uh, like, tales of, like, Braveheart, you know, where they line up, the warriors line up, and they shoot arrows, and they shoot cannons and stuff across. That's, that's, that's far, far away combat, right? But grappling speaks of something up close, personal, wrestling, a fight. You know what I mean? I mean, you see, like, I think of, of the, the war movies like uh, Saving Private Ryan and, uh, and, and where, where like, uh, you know, they, I, think, I think it was Saving Private Ryan where he, they were in hand-to-hand combat. It's, it's World War II, and they're engaging the enemy in warfare, right? And dude's shooting his gun. He's shooting his gun. Gun runs out of bullets, and they're just coming. The enemy's coming on, and he takes off his hat. He takes off his helmet and starts beating people with it. And you tell him, I'm like, that's an intense fight. That's hand to hand, like wrestling. I'm wrestling. And this, if I'm honest with you today, I'm wrestling with my hope in certain areas. I'm wrestling to keep my grip. I'm wrestling to keep my grip. You know, some areas I got it on lock, deadlift, on point. But if I'm honest with you, <laughs> There's an area in particular that just really kind of knocked the wind out of me when God brought it to my attention that I'm, I'm grappling with my grip on hope. And that is, uh, well, well, let me give you a little bit of background, okay? So leading up like this whole month, I've been hit on every side, on every side with, with its health, financial, provision, all, all that stuff. And... Um, Honestly, and I hate to even use the word, it's triggered me in a certain area. And as I'm preparing, you know, I'm thinking about Pastor Donald's message. I'm reading the book, and it's a dope book, life-changing book. I'm thinking about Pastor Jenny's messages, and I'm like, man, I'm supposed to be in, infusing people with hope, and I'm not feeling really hopeful right now. I'm feeling, I'm, I'm feeling kind of hopeless right now. We're talking about building your hope. And in the midst of it, you know, what, I'm, what I've been going through, I can't really get into detail about, but just to give you a synopsis of it, it has triggered the, the orphan heart in me. If I'm honest, you know, I, I just, I'm, just, I'm just trying to be vulnerable today, be real with you guys. I'm, I'm never going to come up here and talk about something I don't know. I'm never going to get up here and pretend. But let me be honest with you. Remember we talked about in the grace, gospel-centered life, we talked about the well-worn ditches on either side of the road of our relationship with God called performing and pretending. And I was very pretend, tempted to perform, and I was very tempted to pretend today in preparation with you. But the thing is, this is that God stopped me in my tracks. I'm like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do? I'm hit on every side. I feel like I'm alone. I'm battling all this stuff and I'm alone. I'm alone. I, nobody's here to me. I, I'm always having to defend myself and I feel like I'm alone. And, and, and I'm always feeling like I got to do for myself. I got to provide for myself. I got to do this on my own because nobody's got me. The orphan heart was triggered in a lot of stuff that I've been, I've been dealing with lately. And I felt the Lord say something so simple to me. He says, how do you build what you buried? I'm like, what is that? Okay. <laughs> Explanation, please. <laughs> like, how do you build what you've buried? And I feel like the Lord was addressing to me. He says, For those of you that didn't know, my father passed away early this year, and that was a tumultuous, uh, I've had a tumultuous relationship with him. He's been absent for a longer time than he was around, and uh, he did end up getting his life together before he checked out of here, 
<clears throat> but his, his leaving here was unexpected. And in, when he got, when initially he got sick last year, you know, I was still grappling with the aftermath and the fallout that his absence had left in my life. I was happy he was doing good. I was, ha I was happy, genuinely happy about it, but there were some things I felt some type of way about that I was still working through, right? And then he, he gets sick. You know, God does a, a miraculous quick work relationally between me and him. And then he ended up passing away. And I'm going to bring you back to the question that the Lord asked me. He said, how do you build what you've buried? And he's saying, you know, the, the orphan heart, my, the thing is this, is that I've, I've always felt the deficiency of my father's absence in the way of protection and provision. I've always felt like I had to fend for myself and I've had to, you know, I've had, to, you know, I'm sure. Yeah, I got big brother Donald. I got Uncle John. I got, but none of them are fathers to me. Right. And what the Lord was saying, how do you, how do you build what you've buried? And what he was revealing to me is that when you buried your father, you buried the hope of being fathered with him. You secretly buried your hope of being fathered with him. And you felt like you've had to function at a deficiency because he's gone. And now, now you think that the, the hope of ever having that, that father, that, that covering as a father, you've secretly buried it because you've, you've, you've built it so deep. You did buried it so deep in the, the, the dirt of disappointment. That you, you know, it kept trying to raise up when it, there was times where he felt he seemed like he was doing good and he was going to get it together this time. And then, you know, promises were made and then only for you to be disappointed again. So you assassinated your hope and you buried it. So that took me back because I'm like, well, Lord, you know, and, and I now, you know, I start feeling like an imposter. I'm starting to feel like, OK, well, then, you know what? So what do I do with this, Lord? What do I do with this? And the Lord was saying, I need you to raise your hopes again. I need to get you your hopes up again. I need to get your hopes up. And it's kind of a, a play on words. You know, the chapters that I covered were raise your expectations and, fo and focus for the future. And, uh, and as I was reading, I'm just like, you know what? Hope is what enables you to raise your expectations, and hope is what powers you and enables you to 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 look forward to the future. And um, I'm like, Lord, I, I I I'm lacking that right now in this area of my life, in the area where I need provision. I'm needing you to pr protect and defend me. I don't have that, but the Lord, in this loving way, He says. Dead things don't intimidate a res resurrected king. Dead things don't intimidate a resurrected king. So I let that wash over. And I was like, the thing that I struggle with the most in front of, as far as being in front of you today is like, I, I feel like, I was like, Lord, but it's not, it's not the... It doesn't kind of necessarily keep track or in step with what everybody else is doing. It's like, don't worry about any of that. There's people in here that are going through the same thing that you're going through where their hope has been buried and they think it's, it's, it's gone and it's, there's no chance, no, 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 not a chance in the world that it'll ever raise up again. But I'm here to tell you that the dead thing don't intimidate the resurrected king. So I'm here to speak to those in the house this morning whose hope has been buried in the dirt of disappointment, whether it was a hope for a family, whether it's hope for a, a husband, whether it's hope for a child, whether it's hope for a relationship to be mended. Let me tell you something. Dead things do not intimidate the resurrected king. Dead things do not intimidate the resurrected king. And as, as, as I begin to, to just allow God to minister to me in this, this, this latest revelation that I'm in the throes of working out, you know, a while back I talked about being powerful and in process at the same time. And that, that's what I am before you, and that's what every 
Christ follower is, is a, a, they're powerful because of Jesus, but we're work in progress at the same time. We're in process, and process is pretty ugly. You get what I'm saying? You know, we, our pastor, praise God, just had a heart transplant, and it was a life-saving measure that, that, that we prayed for. We claimed by the Spirit of God and, and by the favor of God that he would get the perfect match for him. But let me tell you something. There were some hardships along the way. While God was answering the prayer of what we needed, what we hoped for, hello, there was some, there was some hardships along the way. There were some things that, that, that it was, and it got ugly, and it, and it got where we didn't know what, what, what was going to happen but, and it's the same when we're recovering hope, when, when God is, when we ask God to recover our hope in the area of our lives, and he's like, bet, and he comes in and he comes to work and he starts tearing stuff up, like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? Whoa, 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 what are you doing? You know? And as he brought this to my attention, I'm like, I dealt with this. I dealt with this already. I dealt with this already. It's kind of, you know, that, 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 that sinking feeling in your heart when you've heard you're, you've ignored a leaky faucet for a long time. And then you go and you finally like, okay, let me fix the faucet. Okay, cool. Sure. All right. Taken care of. Right. And as you're moving along your business, all of a sudden you notice the linoleum is warped. And then a few months later, after you, you, you address that, the carpet is smelling funny right that was the sinking feeling like dude here we go again here we go again and it is it's like you know what you constantly have to deal with the concept the false concept that that of arrival as a child of God because why we're always powerful and in process simultaneously so as the Lord began to deal with me about it I'm thinking like Lord I thought I dealt with this. I thought I dealt with this. But he began to see, he began to show me the deeper picture and the attachment, how it was relevant. See how a leaky faucet can end up ruining a floor plan, could cause the whole foundation of your house to be compromised? It's the same way. It's the same way. Because when you buried your hope of being covered, when you buried your hope of being fathered, because of your natural father no longer being here, it said everything about what you thought about me. I came to raise your hopes. I came to resurrect your hope in the area of being father. So I'm, 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 I'm wondering if there's anybody else in the room. You don't have to raise your hand or shout amen or just nod your head, give a good Baptist nod. You don't have to do none of that. But I wonder how many people in the room this morning are grappling with their grip on hope also. And I believe that the Lord, that is exactly why the Lord has sent me this morning to encourage you that dead things do not intimidate a resurrected king. Your resurrected king. So as I'm, as, a, as I'm examining the truth that the Lord is bringing to my, to my attention, I'm looking at, you know, wow, this, is, this truly does bleed in every area of my life. How does the misrepresentation of you as Father God that I received from my natural father, who's flawed and human, I, there's not, I, we don't have no beef that's cleared up, but we're li I'm living with the wreckage. I'm still working through the wreckage and the damage and the fallout of 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 the of the absence so it's not so much relationally with my father anymore it's more so relationally relationally with the father now and we get so used to functioning at a deficit that when what we need shows up we don't know how to handle it we don't know how to handle it. And um, I was sharing with my sister. I'm like, dude, I feel like, I feel like a, in, when it comes to this, when it comes to truly allowing Father God to be Father God to me in my life, in a real way, in this season, it's, it's so challenging. I, so I likened it to, a, to a, a, a shelter dog who had been abused. And when you go to, you take it home, you adopt it, you go to pet it, and it kind of growl, growls at you. Because it's used to any hand coming in to be not being in love. I feel like that's how I am 
with the Lord in this area of my life, with Father God in this area of my life, where it's like, no, I'm used to handling this on myself. I don't want to relinquish this to you because I've had my hopes up before and I've been disappointed. And I don't want, I, I'm, I just, just let me, let me expect the worst on my own, please. Let me just expect the worst on my own because I'm tired. I'm tired of getting my, my hopes up and then being shot down. And now you're telling me to raise my hope again. I'm tired. In this area, I haven't had to do it. I haven't had to do it in this area. I haven't had to address it like this before because I was functioning at a deficit and I got familiar with it. And the thing is, this is that how do we expect to heal from what we've made friends with? A lot of us have made friends with the trauma and we've learned how to, to we've gotten un, really, really, really uh, disturbingly familiar with functioning in our trauma and allowing other people to tiptoe around us about it because we refuse to deal with it. We've made strange bedfellows with our traumas that God's wanting to address. Why? So you can have hope. So you can live with hope because you're never going to be able to propel into the future if you don't have hope. Can you go ahead and put that quote that I put up up there? This is one of the quotes from the, uh, the book, and it was about, about the future. I think we have it up here. <laughs> the exact wording of it escapes me at the moment, but it's, it said, without hope for the future, there's no strength for the present. When there is no hope for the future, there's no strength for the present. And a lot of us have been wondering why we, how, why, why am I always so tired? Why am I so tired? Why, why, why am I, there's, I don't, I don't feel like I have anything to look forward to. And I know it seems like as of lately, every time I've been up here, I've been quoting a line from one of Donald's raps. But here's another one for you. There's a prayer, there's a song he had called Prayer Request or Avail of Much Power. And he's basically just talking about the state of things today. And he was talking about the youth of today. He said, and here's the line. He says, live for today because we can't see tomorrow. That is the attitude of, of a lot of young people today. Live for today because you can't see tomorrow. We don't see a future. There's no hope. Without hope for the future, there is no strength for today. And we begin to act recklessly. We live recklessly. Hope. I'm here to raise your hope. I'm here to send you the message of raising your hope this morning. If you've buried your hope in the soil of disappointment, dead things are not intimidating to a resurrected king. Hallelujah. So as God is like dealing with me in this, um, yesterday I was preparing for the message today and, um, my sister sent me a, a song, and it's one I've one one of, I, I sang before and I'm familiar with. And because um, it's like, I don't know, maybe this is just me and it's part of my orphan heart showing. It's like, you know, anytime something regarding this subject of my life has come up, it's like, again, again, like more stuff. Like, when am I going to, when am I ever going to be? over this when am I ever going to be you know over this and and am, is there ever going to be a time when um when I'm not I'm not dealing with this I just I want to be yours I believe you but it's like I don't know what it is about this area that is hard for me it's so hard for me it's like I know the word, and I can believe God for everybody else as father, for him to show up as father and protector and provider for everybody else, but I have a problem when it comes to me. And I'm going to just do something real quick by faith. I'm going to switch over here to the keyboard.
Y'all bear with me. as God was dealing with me this I was like Lord here I am again and if you say I've buried my hope Lord who am I to argue with you Unless you come, will you meet me here again? Because all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? Sometimes especially concerned in this area, I felt like, here we are again. Here we are again, Lord. But he's the one, he is living hope. He's the living hope and he doesn't want me living without hope. So I said, God, in my heart, in my mind, theater of my mind and of my heart, I visualized, I visualized digging up, digging up the hope that I had buried. So I'm like, Lord, this is a task. This is a task. I said, and I just began to pray the lyrics of this song. I said,
associate that with being a scripture that's read at funerals, but it's meant for every day of our lives because it speaks to the character of the one who's carrying, carrying us. But the point I wanted to make about Psalm 23 is it says, he restoreth my soul. I think somewhere along the way, we thought it wasn't important he addresses our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions. He says, I'll restore all of that. I'll restore all of that. Why? So you can have hope. So you can have rest. It goes on to declare and de declare his goodness and his character. How he anoints our head with oil for his name's sake. How he prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. He restores our soul. Hallelujah, God, I thank you. So if it's you this morning I've been talking to, altars are open. I'm going to continue to sing. I feel like the message has been delivered this morning. But it's just like the Lord to go off the beaten path.
Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your word this morning. That you're willing to meet us anywhere. To restore hope. So that we can live with expectation. So that we can look with hope to the future, Lord. I thank you, God, for meeting us here. For meeting us here in this place, God. Whether we were in doubt, Lord. Whether we were in despair, God, I thank you. Whether we were in offense, if we were in hurt, God, if we were wrapped in trauma, Lord, I thank you that our dead hope is no intimidation to the resurrected King. So, God, we just thank you. Lord, let this word be hidden in our hearts, God, that you burn it into our minds this morning, God, that we would carry it through the rest of our lives, Lord. And I thank you, God, that as you continue to show up, as you continue to meet us, Lord, that you would continue to show yourself faithful, that our hope would build, Lord God, that it would be progressive, Lord God, that it would continue to grow and grow based on your character, your faithfulness, your faithfulness, God, to us. You are the safest place to place our hope, God. So we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. And we will tell other people concerning hope, come and meet the men that told us everything about ourselves. Hallelujah.
depths of our hurt and the depths of our despair, God. I thank you. There is no limitation. Nothing keeps you from your beloved. So, Father, I just thank you for every heart in this room this morning, Lord. That they leave here with hope of hope, God. That they leave here with expectations raised, Lord. And a confidence in who you are, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that every person in this house leaves here fully seen, fully known, fully loved, God. And full of expectation that you will do exactly what you said you'd do, Lord. So, Father, as we leave this place, I thank you that your presence goes with us. Thank you, Lord, that you bring us back to the prime time appointed, Lord, with a song on our lips, Lord, and a praise in our hearts. We love you, God, and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, it's okay to give God praise this morning. respectful of this this atmosphere in this room right now if anybody the altars are still open if you need to be dismissed please go ahead and do so we love you god bless you go with god What a beautiful